Now in today's video, I'm going to be helping you guys solve one of the most common training problems that owners face with their Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Welcome back to the Fenrir Staffy Show. If you aren't new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here at Fenrir is about helping you choose the perfect breed for you, then how to become high-level canine leaders that raise high-level canine companions so that they never end up in shelters or unfortunately put down. So if this is your first time here and you want to join this amazing community around Staffies in particular, then make sure you start by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so that you never miss a future staffy video. Now, I've just been going through my emails and trying to help as many people as possible with some of their training and canine behavior queries. And one that I've noticed keeps cropping up to me this morning is around people asking for help with how much their staffies are pulling them when they're on walks. And it's getting to a point where it makes walking with their staffies absolutely miserable. Now, as a canine behaviorist, this is one of those things that a lot of people come to me with. And it's a problem that I honestly really enjoy helping people with. Now, I always say how dog training and canine behavior, and in particular canine behavior modification and rehabilitation, are two very different worlds. Now, when it comes to a dog that pulls on a walk and is miserable to walk with, this is one of those rare occasions where those two worlds do meet and merge quite seamlessly. Because when it comes to a dog pulling on a lead, we have two problems. First of all, there's a lack of obedience that the dog doesn't know and hasn't been trained how to walk nicely to heal. That's definitely kind of a dog training style of uh, issue or a dog training solution. We also have another common issue that is a lack of relationship and a lack of leadership from yourself as the owner so that the dog doesn't feel like they need to look up to you for guidance and direction and this often then spills into a dog that pulls while they're walking and then you'll very quickly find that that'll often spill out into reactive behaviors, barking at other dogs, appearing to be aggressive, barking at other people and what we need to do is address both of those problems simultaneously to be able to have that staffy that we've always dreamed of that walks nicely to heel on our left hand side. So how I achieve results so quickly in this area in particular is around simultaneously solving both of those problems. We work on the relationship and your leadership as an owner and then through that relationship and leadership we learn how to communicate effectively with our dogs utilizing good positive based obedience training to be able to teach them what we do want them to do which like I say is to walk nicely to heal so the way I do that is by first of all putting my owners and the clients I work with and the owners of their dogs through my one month boot camp protocol now if you want more interest we do have that available as a course you can check that out in the link down in the description box below but basically that's a one month protocol that's designed to be extremely structured extremely routine and extremely disciplined to allow you to be able to effectively restructure that relationship so that you come out the other end with a dog that is calm, well-mannered, and looks to seek guidance and direction from yourself as a leader. Once we can achieve that, then everything else that we do with our dogs is incredibly easy. Now, one big problem around staffies in particular that pull is that they are terriers. They tend to be higher energy breeds. When they have a dog that is miserable to walk, people tend to walk them less, so they get less exercise. A dog that isn't exercised enough will then spill out in plenty of other behaviors that can be incredibly difficult to solve. So what I like to do is straight away try and nip this in the bud early and quickly. So we focus using our boot camp protocol on being able to restructure that relationship. But what's excellent about that boot camp protocol is that every single day we dedicate specific time to working on the obedience with our dogs. Now not only does that help in the goal of restructuring that relationship and, and, and allowing that leadership from yourself, so one of the best things we can do for that relationship with our dogs is to work with them is to engage them in a fun, positive, working relationship. That is the key to one of the best relationships you can have with your dog. So as part of the boot camp, we allocate lots of time to be able to do that. And you can make the decision of what it is that you want to focus on. So in this case in particular, we would focus on heel work. Now, heel work really, really isn't rocket science. Again, I cover that in tons of my videos over on Fenrir Canine Training on YouTube. And it's involved in the courses like my Perfect Puppy course. We show you how to do it. 
but the principle is very simple it certainly isn't rocket science we use a law based approach to teach and heal we do it indoors with as little distraction as possible we lure the dog with some food and we lure them to the heel position when they're in that position to our left hand side we mark that behavior with the term heel and they then get access to the food and we positively reinforce it very quickly as we repeat that process over and over again as part of our obedience sessions throughout the boot camp protocol the dog very quickly learns to associate that that verbal marker the term heel means that when i'm on the, my owner's left hand side i get a nice positive experience and i get food reward excellent that is the basis of teaching a dog how to heal we then will start moving on the spot in different directions and luring the dog in different directions so not only do they understand that heal is when i'm stood still but also when i turn in different directions when we take a few steps forward you can lure them and make them follow you in the heel position marking that position with the term heel and positively reinforcing it with praise and food reward again it isn't rocket science and the key is is starting with that base level of foundation of training and making the dog understand that communication really easily and then slowly layering up on top of that foundation block once we've got a dog that can do that indoors with no distraction we might take them out in the garden and do it we then start to add a lead to the equation because the behavior whether they're on lead or off lead should be exactly the same to the dog so we like to teach it without a lead then and put the lead in so they can start to associate the lead with this new command that we've just learned in a really fun and positive way then we start to layer up the distractions we do it out in the garden then we go to a park and we do it and then slowly we start to do it on the road and while we go out on our walks and it might look a bit silly because to start with we might be luring them for the entire way of the walk and rewarding them every few steps but as they get better and as they start to understand we slowly start to phase out the rewards over time so it might go from a reward and praise every three to five steps to every 10 to 12 then every 10 to 12 steps to 20 or 25 and then we might only praise them a few times in the walk and then once halfway through the walk and once at the end and eventually we'll get to a place where because our, we now have that restructured relationship where the staffy looks to us for guidance and direction we know how to communicate with the dog so the dog looks to us for guidance and direction we say thank you i appreciate that what i would like from you in this situation is for you to be on my left hand side walking nicely please if you can do that for me i'll be very happy and i might every now and again reward you for doing so and you'll have a dog that go yes boss no worries i can i know what that is i'll do that no problem and again it's just that very basic concept but it requires discipline it requires structure and routine on your part and it requires high levels of leadership on your part again these things aren't rock science people make the mistake because they don't want to put in the level of work and the level of discipline structure routine and boundaries that are required to have perfect canine companions at no point there have we physically harm the dog at no point there have we hurt the dog we've done it in a very fun positive slow and steady way to teach your staffy how to walk beautifully on a walk and then when people drive by you you'll be the envy of them when they have dogs that can't walk nicely so i hope that answered your question thank you for sending it in i really appreciate it if you've got any questions you can drop them down in the comment section below and hopefully on the next episode of this staffy q a here on the fenrir staffy show i'll get around to answering your question as soon as possible if you are new here and want to join this amazing staffy community that we have on the fenrir staffy show make sure you subscribe hit the like button if you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next episode of the fenrir staffy show